everyone and welcome to our channel. This is Cornell and Thomas from Strategy Quant team. Hello traders. Today we have a very special guest joining us. We would like to welcome an experienced trader who has passed pro trading challenges. Let's welcome Rene Balke from BM Trading. Rene, hello, hello everyone. <laughs> I'm glad to be here. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, um, I love your insights uh, about trading and your life experience uh, in trading you are sharing on your channel. So uh, it's uh, our um, great honor to, to see you there today. And uh, the first thing, to because probably our uh, users uh, and uh, are not uh, don't know you yet. So could you please introduce yourself? What is your daily job, what you are doing and, um, and how did you start it with algo trading? At this? Yeah, sure. Um, so my name is René. I am an algo trader. So I use automated trading programs for, for trading. And I do this for close to eight years now, I think. So it's, it's been a, quite a journey to, to get to the point where I am, am right now. And um, yeah, um, like, where did I start? I, I would say I did like the, the, the normal thing that most, most people do. I, I went to school <laughs> and afterwards I did um, a integrated studies program at a German bank, the Commerzbank, where I had the first uh, touch point with the financial markets. But then directly after this um, yeah, education program there, I left the bank and moved to a small um, asset management firm in, in Germany where I did an internship. And at this firm, they were only trading manually. So they were looking at the charts, making the analysis, and then decide, okay, at this point, I want to go and buy a market. For example, at this point, I, I want to sell or I want to exit or, yeah, m manual trading. I mean, most, mm -hmm. most people watching this will be, will be traders and will know how, how it works. And there were also some strategies at this asset management firm that were or that had a fixed set of rules. For example, mm -hmm. a classical range breakout strategy where you buy or sell every day based on a fixed set of rules. So you have a range between two points in time, and then if there's a breakout, you mm -hmm. enter a trade. So they were doing it manually. And in my head, this did not really make any sense because why? <laughs> if you have a if you have a fixed set of rules, it, it makes no sense to do it manually because you will make mistakes. Um, it just takes time. It's it's never perfectly executed if you are a human trader. So um, this was when I when I first um, got in touch with automated trading because then I realized um, that in the Meta Trader, this was also eight years ago the platform I started to work with. In the Meta Trader, it's super easy to to create your own automated programs, and then I worked myself a little bit into this world of of automated trading. So I I just um, consumed everything that I could find, like some programming tutorials on YouTube. I read the Meta Trader documentation, the programming language, and and everything, and really worked worked myself into it. Yeah, it took some sleepless nights, <laughs> but um, yeah, finally I was able to to um, to automate this range breakout strategy, which was at this point just a very easy program that was not perfect because my programming was not that good. But then, yeah, from this from this point on, I just I stick to automated trading and and learn more and more, wrote more strategies, and then also um, yeah started to to teach programming on, on YouTube and um, yeah. And then in the last eight years, I kinda, it got me to the point where I am, am right now. But this is um, a little bit my, um, my way into the topic of, of automated trading. Thank you. Thank you, Rene. Uh, yeah, I, I'm glad you meant the, the, the situation when you saw the traders who are placing uh, Placing still this, uh, playing for still the same rules, watching uh, the screens. Because um, I can, I know that uh, many many traders think that just sitting at the front of computer is the their ticket to the success. But it's not this, yeah. you know. 
Yeah. It makes no sense. <laughs> yeah, you've got 10,000 of hours yeah. in front of you, but uh, basically you need to fill your time with meaning, meaningful activities uh, regarding trading to move somewhere. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. And uh, as you, you told that you are like for eight years in this industry, um, uh, many traders uh, have uh, quite, uh, let's say, a long, uh, long journey behind them. And uh, some of them are successful, the most of them not. Uh, so I would like uh, to ask you, what was kind of the breaking point uh, in your trading career, which uh, you think uh, maybe some aha moment or something uh, where you started to, where you started to be really sure that you are on the right track or? Yeah, so or, um, yeah, for me, it was, um, it was definitely when I started to look into automated trading and mm -hmm. uh, creating automated trading strategies. Because um, when I was uh, at the asset management firm and also before this, I, I traded a bit as a hobby, I would say. Mm -hmm. But uh, I always uh, traded manually before. Like at the very beginning, I started with manual trading because I didn't really know about automated trading. So um, as probably everyone else, I started with um, putting the orders by hand, trying to mm -hmm. analyze the markets. And um, this was a constant up and down. So there was no really, I mean, it, it was just based on luck, I would say. For example, yeah. I had my, my very first uh, short-term trading account was was an account that I opened with a, uh, it's actually a German a German bank, the Comdirect bank, mm -hmm. and um, they had a um, promotion. So you, you could open an account, uh, a CFD trading account, and if you do 500 trades or 500 lots in the DAX, I don't know what exactly was the, the, the rule, but if you do 500 trades, you will get 500 euro. So, <laughs> so I was uh, clever and I thought if I just put 500 euro in this account and just trade 500 times, I, I cannot lose, right? Because I will get 500 euro. So it's a, it's a, I, I, yeah, I cannot really lose. Um, and then I traded this 500 euro account and actually I, I was able to double it mm -hmm. by luck, I would say at this point. So I was mm -hmm. at, uh, at 1000 and then I, um, but I didn't really ha have a, a plan or, or something. So I was mm -hmm. at 1,000 and then I, get the, I got the 500 euro from the bank, the, the promotion deal. Mm -hmm. And then I, I don't know what happened, but I kind of overtraded, did stupid things. So I brought the, the whole account down to nearly zero. <laughs> so mm -hmm. this was my, mm -hmm. my first actual real life trading example. So I lost all of the money pretty much in my trading account, but I had the 500 euro from the promotional offer. So it was more or less break even for me. But yeah, this was also the point where I realized I'm not really able to trade manually. And I had one or two more tries after this, but I, it never really showed any consistency, I would say, because the problem is, and I don't know about you guys, but, but many traders will realize this. If you trade manually, there are different periods, I would say, because sometimes everything seems to be just easy and great and you make a profit and you make another profit. And after one or two days of making good profits, you feel like you are on the, on the top of the world, pretty much. You are the best trader. It yeah. will always go on like this. I am pretty sure every trader knows this feeling. And then you start to get into a period where out of the sudden, nothing works. And, and these are the periods where it gets <laughs> really tough <laughs> because then after one or two days, maybe your profits are gone. And then you start to realize, shit, uh, <laughs> what, what should I do? Because trading is not only making profits, it's only generating losses. And yeah, so when I traded manually, for me, it was always like this. I, I failed at the top of the world at some day. At another day, I was thinking about, I don't know, can I even do this long term? And, and it was just not really showing any perspective, like nothing was ever secure. And then, um, yeah, I explained before how I got into automated trading with the meter trader. So when I started to create my first um, automated trading strategies, then mm -hmm. with, with the tools that you have in the meter trader, like the strategy mm -hmm. tester, this was 
when I really realized, okay, you can test the strategy for the last, I don't know, 10 years or 15 years. Mm -hmm. So for me, this was the very first time that I had something like, or something I could hold on to. Because this was, even though it can never predict the future, this showed me that, okay, if I would have done this, exactly this for the last 10 years, I would have made a profit. And this is mm -hmm. something that manual trading could never give me. Because with manual trading, it's, I don't know, there's just no real consistency, I would say. Because there's a lot of interpretation, every day is a little bit different, and there's the this is like one of the main differences between manual trading and automated trading because with automated mm -hmm. trading there's no not this room for interpretation you just you just do the same thing every time and if it worked for the last 10 years in my mind there is a good chance that it will also work in the future again it's not guaranteed it's it's not guaranteed or anything but there is a good chance that it will also work in the future and then yeah from this point on i started to uh to, to trade a bit, I started the, to trade the strategies also in demo accounts. And then um, I think seven years ago, I started to um, trade it in a small live trading account also. Because um, back then, I was also thinking there's a big difference between live and demo accounts, which uh, today I do not really think anymore. Um, but yeah, I switched to a small live trading account where I deposited 1,200 euro. And um, I traded this account for many, many years, six years or so. And I um, uh, also shared this on, on YouTube all the time. So um, this was when I first realized how trading can work in a live trading account. And um, yeah, I was not only making profits in this account. I also had longer periods where I did not make any profits and... Um, yeah, but, but this just, just showed me how, how trading in general works. And it's not always making profits, it's not always making losses, but you just have to go through the, through the periods. And um, yeah, I don't know, I think I, I still have the, um, if you are interested, I still have the analysis of this specific account on my PC. So if you want, I can, I can also share this yeah. and, and show you the sure. performance of this I mean, it's a small account, but it really it it really shows how um, how trading can can work. So yeah, sure, sure. Wait, let me let me find it real quick on my PC. And is the backtest what is something really helpful for you? I mean, psychologically and especially during the drawdowns. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> definitely, <laughs> because. Um, I mean, in the back test, for me, probably the most important thing is to see that there are really good periods and, and there are also bad periods. But if you, if you see this in the back test, it makes you, uh, it helps you to go through the actual drawdown periods in your life account then, because you know, this is not unusual. This also happened in the past. But also in the long run, it, it should be profitable. And I can maybe, wait, how can I share my present? Uh, maybe you can accept this and then I can present my screen. Okay, so this is a, a, my trade buddy, which is just a trading journal. And you can see um, in this account, I started with 1,200. And this is just the documentation of all my trades. Mm -hmm. And... Um, you can see that I started this in the end of 2017 with 1,200 euro. And I did not trade a lot of risk. This is just like really low risk trading, which was my first live trading account that I kind of took serious because I did a lot of analysis. I, uh, I set up everything on my server, like I trade different strategies. Um, this range breakout strategy, I traded a Donkey Channel breakout strategy, a SIR strategy, and one strategy based on the ATR. But what I really wanted to show you here is that in these, um, wait, when, I, when did I stop trading this? I just stopped trading this some months ago. Um, yeah, I, I, so I traded this for like uh, 19, 20, 21, 22, 20, 20, 20, like seven years, a little bit longer. And in these seven years, it was not always going good. So we can see, I also had a really long 
drawdown period here uh, from mid 2018 to um, yeah mid or late 2019. So I had one year where I was not really able to make profits, or actually I was losing money. Money, but since I had these back tests, what I did in this period, I was constantly just comparing the actual live trading results to the results in the tester. So I did the same tests again, for example, for this year here where I lost money with all of my strategies in the strategy tester and the meter trader again. And then I compared the results in the tester to the results that I had in my live trading account. And this showed me that the, um, the similarity is very high. So it, it told me that this is maybe just a normal drawdown period. And it's completely normal for the strategy to have this period. And then, yeah, from this time on then, from the lowest point, it was going way better again. And the last uh, six years or so, it was gen then making profits. I mean, this is, of course, not making me rich. Like in the whole years, I made a profit of like 800 euro. But this is the first actual live trading account that I had for a very, very long time, only trading automated. And this is what gave me, I would say, most of my confidence for my trading that I do now. And um, yeah, and now I just started it a few months ago. I started trading a bigger account where I trade a um, account like a 50,000 euro account. So a lot bigger than this one. But uh, yeah, I would say I can only do this because I got the confidence from, from this project here where I really realized that, um, that trading can work. So yeah, this is... Um, um, this was uh, this this project that I had for a very long time that gave gave me a lot of a lot of confidence in uh, in trading and automated trading. Me personally, I cannot imagine that I have losing streak of five hundred trades if I trade manually. But that's also where you have the 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 benefits from the back test. For example, if we have a look at this um, account here again. Uh, I had a maximum losing streak of 23 trades. <laughs> it's not like 500, but it's it's a very it's a very big number. And if you imagine trading manually and losing over 20 times in a row, I mean you would go insane probably. So this is um, <laughs> this is yeah, where it really is helps to to see the back test. And if you see, okay, this is I mean this is a huge losing streak, but it it can happen. And especially with strategies like this, where you see I have a total hit rate um, with these strategies of like 33%. So you kind of need these um, long-term backtests, I think, to, to really stay confident. And I mean, in the, in the end, uh, you, you still make profits if you make, uh, for example, the largest profit here in this account was 80 euro and the largest loss was 25. So... It's just a combination of different different factors, but this is again what what the back test can really help you with because that this will give you the uh, the the confidence. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's uh, like it's something that every every trader have to do by himself, and uh, yeah. this is something we can show. They will check it. Yes, I know. Let's start trading, but until everyone will start to live, trade their live account and. Uh, and they have this series of uh, of uh, like losing trades, for example, for half year, half a year. Then then he will start to understand what's what is real about. But uh, yeah, I'm glad that uh, you became consistent. It's probably this is the main reason why we are why we are here today, and we are speaking together. Otherwise, you would probably not be a trader anymore. And uh, as you told. Uh, now you are starting trading, build up on this confidence you made up with this small account. You are starting trading your big accounts now, which will have a bigger impact, obviously, in your uh, on your finances. And uh, this is something I would like to emphasize because uh, because uh, this is the exa exactly the way the, every trader should go. Mm. And in strategic quant, uh, yeah, the traders have robots, but. Uh, they need to understand that there is also this maybe even bigger part is the this way they should start and stick to and follow and go yeah a, thank you thank you for uh, sharing this uh, honest uh, journey because my another question was how you overcome the period of drawdowns and now 
you answered perfectly that simply you have to believe your back tests and you have to believe your strategies and you have and you have to have uh, simple experience experience it in the past and mm -hmm. based on it you can build up the future and uh, uh, maybe now you meant uh, several interesting robots like this open range atr dungeon channel uh, and other and i would like to ask you do you have some favorite trading favorite robot i know that uh, your channel is a lot of, about open range breakout but uh, obviously you are mentioning many many different concepts and uh, basically in strategic one it's quite uh, not uh, difficult to build up uh, different kind of robots simple simple ones simple logics mm. and also or um, coded by yourself uh, in your case so uh, what's what's your what's your point of view on the different logics and are is some logic or trading style more favor favorable for you or preferable or um, or you are just using them as robots yeah so how i see it is um in the end i trade whatever makes profits i i don't really care about the specific type of of strategy um but i just realized um that there are some some basic uh, concepts that you can pretty much apply for every strategy or every robot that will um, make your chances of winning higher. Because when I started, I was thinking that it's good to have a lot of trades <laughs> and to, to maybe trade on a small time frame because then you have more opportunities to go into trades and everything. But with the experience that you get and... Um, yeah, the more experience you get as a trader, you realize that, that this is not really the case. So the goal should not be to have as many trades as possible or to trade on a very small time frame because on small time frames, you have a much higher impact of the overall trading costs, which mm -hmm. are commission, also spread, also the slippage that you get. So the more trades you, you make, um, the higher the impact of these trading costs is. And um, mm -hmm. this is a really, really high impact that uh, many, many people do not really, really think about. So what I then, over the time, um, uh, move to is to, to, to trade just longer trades. I still make a lot of day trades, for example, with a wage record strategy, where I hold positions um, during one day only. But I always try to catch the biggest possible move on this day i would say so for example the range breakout strategy how it works is in the morning you create this little range and then um, um i don't know do i sk still share my screen here i can also show this yeah. in the chart yes, yes. okay mm -hmm. yes. so let me just connect to the uh, server here um so then yeah again with the range breakout strategy i just create this um like range in the uh, wait where is it in the beginning of the day and then i try to um capture the the biggest possible move on this day mm -hmm. uh, so for example if we have a look at uh, at this here mm -hmm. we can see that in the in the morning for example in this specific uh, account i trade from 3 to 11 i build the range and then i trade the breakout and then i do not operate with a take profit so I say, if the market wants to travel a long way, I will definitely take the profits for this whole, um, for the whole move. So I just close the position in the evening then. So I have multiple hours where the market can move into, um, uh, into the direction of this trade. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, whenever I tried, for example, to trade with the take profit, this was not really working out for me or it was not as... Uh, profitable as trading without a take profit and i think it's simply because if you trade with a uh, take profit for example you just limit your um limit the the move so um this way without tra uh, trading with a take profit i can take much higher profits and um this way yeah the the um yeah or this is pretty much the concept that i have for every strategy that i use right now so i do not have a uh, favorite strategy or maybe it is the range record strategy because this is what i use most but also in this account what i just talked about which is a 
uh, a bigger account, I also trade different strategies, but you can see all of these strategies or, or none of these strategies uses ATP. So I have the, the same concept in all of these uh, strategies. So mm -hmm. um, yeah, these are some things that I developed over time, I would say. And also um, none of these strategies are short-term strategies. So they will all, all of these trades will be closed at some point in the evening. So it's, I don't do this quick in, quick out because yeah. over the years I just realized that it's it's just not it's just not working because trading costs are too high, the the slippage has a too big impact. Um, so yeah. yeah. Also, this is the account that I just talked about, which is the uh, fifty thousand euro account. Um, please don't be surprised by the small bot small balance. I just um, deposited fifteen k just to have enough for the margin. But I trade this mm -hmm. like a uh, like a 50k account. So it's yeah, yeah you can yeah. see it here the profit and the deposit was 15k. The rest is profit. So yeah, just if someone is wondering. But yeah, so I I, I moved more to these. Or I stepped away from the the very short term strategies and um, mm -hmm. moved more to strategies that hold positions longer. So in this account, for example, I always hold for multiple hours, sometimes even for over one day. So um, yeah, but this is also and, something I developed over time. And mm -hmm. do you use uh, end of day exit for all of your strategies? Um, yeah, yeah, in the yeah in this account for. Or in all of my strategies, I think right now I use uh, end of day exits or just at a specific point of time. It's different. Like in some mm -hmm. uh, strategies, I trade at uh, 6 p.m. In some strategies, I, I close uh, short before midnight. But this is just um, these small nuances are something that I just figured out during long periods of backtesting. And this mm -hmm. is uh, where I really rely on the backtest. And even though it cannot really predict the future. I think if it was better in the last 10 years to close at a specific time, yeah, I mean, why should I change it, right? So, yeah. Understand. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's an interesting, interesting point that uh, you really don't have any holy grail, let's say, or some uh, special robot which is making most of your profits, this winning horse. But basically you stick to some uh, good concepts which, uh, or which uh, then in total, when you added everything together, simply put you on this profitable side and uh, and makes you yeah. makes you profit and uh, you are you are able to you are able to trade. Yeah, this yeah. is also since you mentioned this, this is also interesting because I mean there are so many different robots. And for example, if you have a look at something that many people will know, it's this MQL5 marketplace where you can also purchase robots from other uh, providers and you will see there are thousands of robots and so many yeah. different robots and you would think oh my god these are so many different strategies and and this one is the best maybe or this one is the best but if you if you look behind the curtain you will realize or if you get some more experience if you maybe also develop some strategies on your own you will realize mm -hmm. that there are of course, thousands of different expert advisors, but the strategies often are very similar. <laughs> so yeah. you can really combine many, many, like many, many of these expert advisors are Martingale programs or grid programs. Mm -hmm. And of course, I mean, the entry is slightly different. Mm -hmm. But in the end, the, the, the factor that has the highest impact on the overall performance of this specific program is this Martingale functionality or this grid functionality because mm -hmm. in the end like it like where you set the first entry is it can, it, of course it makes a difference but it's not like what really is the biggest impact here and um, the mm -hmm. biggest impact might be this martingale or grid uh, functionality and then you for example have uh, scalping strategies that try to yeah. go in and out quickly and you can find another 500 EAs in the MQL5 market that use scalping strategies. And again, here the entry is a little bit uh, different from EA to EA because they use different indicators. But if you then have a look at the uh, balance and, 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 and equity curve, they are usually very 
similar for mm -hmm. these different approaches. Like for example, if you have a Martingale program or a grid program, which will um, just buy more and more positions if a position is losing, for example, the balance curve will usually just look like this. <laughs> so it will go up, up all the time. And then at some point, um, yeah, it, it might crash because mm -hmm. you do not realize the losses. So the balance can only go up. And then if the losses get too big and you get a margin call, you will just crash. Um, if you look at the equity, of course, this is a little bit different because the equity with the open position will have yeah, drawdowns. Yeah. But yeah, but all of the Martingale grid programs or most of them will look exactly like this. It's always the same. So you can just combine all of these strategies. And for... Mm -hmm. um, For scalping strategies, it's it's also similar. It will also look like this. It will go up. But here for scalping strategies, here you usually have a stop loss, which is a lot bigger than the take profit. So the, the equity or balance will look like this. It will go up with all of the all of the small profits that a scalping strategy makes. And then you will get some some big losses. So mm -hmm. <laughs> so all of these scalping strategies will look like this, or most of them. So This is how you can really tell how a specific strategy works just by looking at the at the balance or the equity. And um, yeah, for example, for, for my range breakout strategy, it's it also has a very typical curve. Like it will most of the days actually are more or less break even. <laughs> or sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. So it's often at break even. And then since I do not trade with the take profit, as I explained before, sometimes you have these very big profits. And then the equity mm. goes a little bit up and then it's more or less break even and then it goes up or down. So, yeah, so there are so many different strategies, but if you really have a closer look, you will realize that you can also, or you can always build baskets of strategies that follow specific concepts, I would say. And yeah, there are some concepts like maybe five, six common concepts that are widely used and most strategies fit in one of these baskets. So, um, yeah. And then of course, every strategy has one or two small changes, but yeah, yeah, yeah. for the general outcome, it's more important what the main or what the key concept is, I would say. And yeah, yeah, but, yeah. but Also, this is used a lot for uh, for marketing purposes, of course, because on the MQ5 market, for example, you will also see that every seller is saying that his strategy has some hidden concepts and it's it's very good. Of course, I mean, this is marketing, but in the end, uh, yeah. And if you watch the top performing programs in the MQ5 market for a while, for, for some months, you will see that you will see the rise and fall of different products. And it's always the same. And the people do not understand, which is a little bit funny, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I totally agree with you. And uh, one told they have some secrets also, but basically honest, there is some money management, which you can just, as you told, you yeah. just look at equity and you can, uh, you, you see what kind of money management it uses, And then there might be a slightly different, slightly different um, entry. And, uh, Uh, the, uh, so uh, to summarize it, we went through your career, which was uh, uh, the, there was great insight about uh, about consistency and uh, building confidence in your portfolio. Then you shared about uh, some insights about uh, the the robots. Uh, uh, what's your what's your like key key points uh, you are stick to and where you are looking for the edge or profits. Uh, and um, basically your view. And uh, now let's uh, move uh, to the topic, which uh, is very interesting for many traders, especially now it, uh, um, because uh, it's more and more popular. And this is the prop trading. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, on your account, on your uh, YouTube channel, you are uh, very actively recording videos about the uh, passing challenges or, or going through the challenges and uh, And this was also one of the points uh, we told, oh, we have to invite this guy into this show because uh, because uh, this is simply very like, uh, this is big, big, big topic now. And uh, it's, uh, and again, there is a lot of marketing in it, but basically behind that, there is some statistic you have to go through and you have to, you have to face it the right way. 
you have to go through it through the right way to simply so so you can have some benefits from it so uh, now I, I would like to move to the second part of this interview and focus more on this uh, uh, prop uh, this prop trading and prop uh, uh, challenges and uh, I would like to ask you directly we have a lot of uh, practical experience towards the experience of and your experience with the prop trading mm -hmm. yes so um the, the this prop trading um topic is is really huge right now so on, on youtube many people yeah. talk about this because i mean i can understand this it's a little bit um it's addressing the dreams of many people because it says yeah, that you exactly. do not really need a lot of money to trade huge funds and this is the the marketing claim that prop firms use to to um yeah to draw a lot of attention and it's also of course it caught my my attention also because it was kind of everywhere in this trading industry and there were a lot of um ups and downs also with prop firms going bankrupt and you probably all heard the stories so yeah when i started um trading with prop firms or trying prop firms i was actually trading with well I started with one of these prop firms that went bankrupt. It was my Forex funds. I don't know if, if people still remember this, but it was back then, besides FTMO, one of the biggest prop firms. So I started trading with it because it was slightly cheaper than FTMO. And um, yeah, I, I, I tried to pass the challenge as everyone else because it was also interesting to me to see how does the trading work and... Um, uh, can you trade with prop firms as you can trade with normal brokers and can you use expert mm -hmm. advisors and how hard is it really to pass these challenges and then I realized it's really hard <laughs> and okay. uh, the the problem was or the main problem for me personally was that um, back then when I started which was like I don't know, one and a half, two years ago, I don't know exactly. When I started trading with the prop firms, they all had this rule that you have to pass the challenge in, let's say, 30 days. And then for the verification, you also have 30 days. And then if you pass both of these phases, um, you will become a prop trader. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if we should explain the concept of, of prop firms. I think most people watching this will, will know this already. Yeah, so, I think so. yeah. They say you have to pass like the challenge phase and the verification phase where you can trade and then have to make a specific amount of profit without having a, a huge drawdown. Then you get funded and you will get money from them that you can then trade. And yeah, if you make profits, you will get a huge profit split of this. So this is the general idea. So yeah, I was um, uh, always struggling or the biggest problem for me was this 30 day period because as I showed before, <laughs> my strategies do have really long drawdown periods. <laughs> and um, this is why um, yeah, I then also started uh, to look into different other strategies. For example, I passed my first um, my Forex Funds challenge and verification with a Skyping robot, which, Ooh. as I explained before, I'm not a really big fan of. But for these prop firm challenges, with a 30-day restriction, it was kind of good because, um, yeah, the the I, I explained this concept before of Skyping programs. Usually, you do make a lot of small profits, and of course, you have big losses. But if I just hit the profit targets of the um, of the prop firm before I get uh, too many of these losses, I will just pass. So this was when I first passed a uh, prop firm challenge with my forex funds and then um yeah i lost this account because <laughs> i did a stupid mistake I, uh, I configured my expert advisor not correctly and i traded a big lot size and um lost the account with one trade which was a little bit okay stupid. <laughs> but yeah <laughs> this <not>. was um <laughs> my very first uh, <laughs> prop firm account and then i tried to pass the challenges um or, or Closely, uh, shortly after this, uh, my forex funds went bankrupt or just shut down. I don't know the exact reasons, but yeah, this was kind of over then anyways. And then I started to um, trade a bit 
with FTMO because FTMO is, I think, the biggest player in um, this prop firm game when it comes to CFD and Forex trading. Um, so I thought, like, if there are so many prop firms getting, uh, getting shut down, the, the chances to find a stable one is probably with the biggest player. But I don't know if this makes sense. I mean, so far they are still alive and, and operating. But yeah, then I, I moved to, to this FTMO. And then I started, uh, I can also sh show this here. So this is my FTMO um, uh, account. And you can see here, I then started to do a lot more challenges. And you can see um, a lot of them are not passed. And wait, is this? Yeah, you can see here, um, like in the end of 2022, or beginning of 2023, I then bought more challenges and I tried to pass them. But um, a big problem was that with this 30-day uh, period that they had, you really have to take a lot of risk. Mm -hmm. Because otherwise you cannot hit the profit target in, um, in 30 days. So I tried a lot of different stuff. I also tried it with, uh, for example, these were some... Um, experiments um, of mine where I tried to pass it with um, um, Martingale and Grid programs just because they usually make a lot of profit. But of course, I had the equity drawdown, which was then also not working. And then after a while, I realized that I failed so many challenges because, and the main reason was the 30-day period. Mm -hmm. um, so I realized this is, probably not really sufficient and also if you think about it it's not really what trading or real trading means for me because you just cannot say that in the next 30 days you will make x amount of profit exactly it's just mm -hmm. not it's not realistic it's not um yeah it's just not what trading is so I mean, I know why prop firms have this rule because if the trader fails, it's easy money for them. But it's, it's not what long-term real trading looks like. So at this point, I decided, okay, I, I, I won't really buy any more challenges and I will stop this prop firm thing um, because it's not really sufficient for me. Because, I don't know, maybe I'm just a bad trader, but I was never able to consistently hit the profit target in just uh, 30 days without going super, super high risk. And this is just not really trading. It's more gambling, I would say. But then there was a big uh, change in the prop firm industry and they all started to take away this 30-day rule. Um, I think one prop firm started it and then all of them um, started to hop onto this train and they all removed the 30-day um, drawdown rule. And this was when I started six more challenges with this um, or without the 30-day rule. And these are the last challenges that I then started. And I don't know, out of these six, um, uh, yeah, I, I don't know, it's a little bit hard to, to um, get the overview here. But yeah, out of these, th these six, I lost one. And I also documented all of this on my YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. So who's interested, you will find all of the videos. So I lost one of these challenges. And five of them are still active, where one of them is already won. So I won the uh, verification and the challenge phase. Three of them are currently in the verification and one is still in the, in the challenge phase. So out of mm -hmm. these six now, without the 30-day rule, I was able to, to pass five challenges and one verification already. And I only failed one account. So you can see this mm -hmm. really makes all the impact. Because now, without the 30-day rule, you can really trade. You don't yeah. have to force anything. You don't have to go high risk. It doesn't matter if it takes five or six months. So for example, like uh, let's have a look at... Uh, I hope I can find uh, one of them quickly. Like I just have to look at the... Um, at the date here i think like for example this one was um july that i just passed <laughs> and you can see um i traded this for a very long time so i started trading this challenge in the end of last year 
and it took me like six or seven months to pass this challenge. But if you have a look at this equity or, or balance or whatever, it's just super stable. So it's, it's mm -hmm. and this is what, what trading is for me. So this is now actual trading. And um, yeah, the drawdowns are not super high. I hit the profit target in the end with, with one big trade, but this is what actual trading looks like. And yeah, without the 30 day period, now I'm able to actually trade really with prop firms. And this is what really makes the difference. So now, yeah, I have these um, still five challenges running. And now I think um, prop firms are really something that you, that you can do, but um, still I have to wait if they really pay out consistently or if they will block me because I use expert advisors or if they just find a reason to, to ban my accounts because um, for, for these prop firms, and this is what a lot of people also do not really understand, it's not good if the trader is profitable <laughs> because <laughs> prop firms do not make their money with profitable traders. They make their money with all of the unprofitable traders because they make the money from the registration fee. Because even uh, if I pass the FTMO challenge, uh, like this challenge, which is a past, or this, this account, it's a real FTMO account, but it's not a live trading account. It's still a demo account, and it's always mm -hmm. a demo account with FTMO. So they are never really... So if you, if you pass the challenge and if you become a prop firm trader, you are still not trading real money. You are still trading demo, demo money, And if you make profit, the prop firm will have to pay you from, from yeah, the right. funds that they have. But um, this is pretty much why prop firms do not want you to be successful. And yeah, that's I, a big I would conflict just of interest. One, one point yeah. that uh, there are brokers, there are brokers who, uh, who uh, simply connect to worlds. One is of the signal world, let's say you are signal, and the world of investors and investors can follow signals. So uh, they are, yeah, it's, uh, uh, for example, we tested uh, Darwinex uh, and I'm sure there are more where where you can uh, connect them, but uh, you you hit the nail that uh, basically the most of this uh, business is about statistic and they hope that yeah. there will be not, not many Renes, but many maybe just uh, gamblers. So, Yeah, yeah, but it's a pretty safe bet because most people lose money. <laughs> yeah. So I think it's more or less prop firms can kind of print money because most traders will fail anyways. And it's a, they have a really good, good chance and that they will have a lot more people fail and lose money than people that really make money consistently. And May I have one question regarding money management? Is, it, is there something... Uh, Do you think something like if uh, there is some, let's say this level, which you have not, uh, you shall not go through, yeah. you can't go through, otherwise you will lose. Is there something like you are, say, you are uh, using the smaller, smaller positions when you are closer to this level and you, you are getting out of this level, you are using like bigger positions because you have more money to risk or you are, you are, uh, you have consistent money management or do you have any strategy in uh, regarding money management? how to are for passing these challenges? Mm -hmm. No, actually, I just use the same, uh, same lot same. size all the time. Okay. Because for me, um, when I had a look at the prop firm game, for me, it was also just a statistic because I, I was mm -hmm. thinking about I can buy as many challenges as I want. And for me, it's just important. Can I pass more challenges or can I make more, more money out of it uh, Then, or can I pass more challenges than I fail? And I, I explained my, my journey here before. When I still had this 30-day restriction, for me, mm -hmm. my, my summary was, no, I can't. Because mm -hmm. the, the rule is just too hard. It's just, it will put me in such a bad position that I cannot consistently outtrade this rule. So I yeah, realized yeah. at this point, okay, this is not constantly, I mean, it's just stupid. Why should I do something where I lose money in the long run? So now without this 30-day rule, it's a little bit different because as I said before, out of these six challenges, I passed one, uh, three are in the verification, mm -hmm. one is waiting for the verification. So right now it's going a lot better. So if this will now work out in the long run and they really pay out and I can make profit out of this, then I can... Uh, 
I can just buy more challenges. But also at this point, I don't really, like if I create this statistic where I can now buy challenges and the chance for me to pass this mm -hmm. challenge and make mm -hmm. money is let's say 51%, then I, I can just repeat it 1000 times yeah, and yeah, I will okay. make profit, right? So I do not really have to make these adjustments where I take a smaller risk, for example, if I'm close to losing a challenge, because if I lose it, I can just buy another one. Yeah. And understand. for me, it's more important that overall, do I have this small edge? Like, do I have this 51% chance to, like, before I buy a challenge and I have a 51% chance to walk away with more money in the end, mm -hmm. it's just a no-brainer pretty much. I, would, I can just do it. So this, yeah. is always, yeah. this is always how I think. Also with, with trading, I always think like this, like in the long run, can I make money? And this is also when you start to realize that drawdown periods are, of course, they suck. <laughs> Nobody likes to be in a drawdown. But in the, in the long run, in the end, can you make money? And if the answer is yes, yeah. Yeah, it just gives you the confidence to just um, do the same thing that you did before, even if you are in a drawdown. Because in the long run, if you make profit, you could you you should just do what you did before, because you will be or you will make money in the long run. And this is the only question that I ask mm -hmm. myself. Like, and uh, uh, for example, when you are let, let's say you know, let's say you have you have money for five challenges, and. Uh, Will you start all of them at one point with different portfolios or you will, for example, wait one week, then wait another week, start another um, and basically expect that uh, uh, some of the portfolio will hit the rising uh, rising period or uh, um, yeah, simply good period, simply then you have higher chance. Basically, this is true. Some of them will fall into drawdown, but after drawdown, there is this yeah. rising period and basically with Second portfolio will hit this period. Is something you are thinking about this timing, or you are just uh, you just don't care? Uh, yeah, right now I do not really do this because uh, I still I'm still in the in the in the in the period where I try to figure out if FTMO will ban me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> because <laughs> I still have to get some to the point where I get some big drawdowns. Because I think if I just get a uh, payout. If I just request a payout of like 1K, they will pretty surely pay me. But let's say, for example, if I really get to the point where I can request a payout of like 10K, this will be very interesting. If they will try to find a reason to ban me or if they just pay out. And if they pay out, then I can really start to think about this as a business. But right now, yeah. this component or this uh, uncertainty of... <laughs> Prop firms that have this little bit of shady uh, re re rep reputation. Um, this is just too big in my head right now. So first of all, I have to figure out if this is really, in the yeah. long run, um, something I can rely on. But then, yeah, it would definitely make sense to, um, to for example, start an account every month because you have different starting points in your, uh, in your strategy. And also with my strategies that I started here, uh, I started these six accounts and all of them were started pretty much at the same time, but I traded different strategies in all of them. Mm -hmm. or, in, or actually in many of them, I traded the range breakout strategy, but I had different uh, settings. And the, the settings or the inputs were so different that the outcome was completely different also. In some of them, for example, I used a break-even stop. Uh, in some of them, I did not. In some of them, I used a... Um, risk of 0.5% for every trade. In another mm -hmm. account, I used a fixed lot size of 0.2 okay. lots for every trade. So I made these small changes so that the performance would be different. And um, of course, some of them would perform bad in a specific time period, but others would perform good. So um, yeah, I, I, I just distributed the, yeah, uh, the ideas uh, on the different accounts. So you are waiting if you will be the guy who is uh, like denying to go to casino. So because we have in Czech Republic, there is the biggest trading firm, RSA, called and uh, Mr. Janeček, the owner, he cannot go to casinos in USA because he found a way how to 
win some games. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Basically, yeah. I think for some games you can like count cards and everything. So you have the game now, and you are waiting if they are they will allow you to come again into casino or not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a it's a bit similar. <laughs> FTMO is my casino right now. <laughs> yeah, no casino. <laughs> yeah, right. We will see how this turns out. It's just interesting for me. <laughs> yeah, I will be very curious and I will watch this story as it's yeah. going, <laughs> going in. Because, um, yeah, it's, I'm very interested how they will, how they will, will treat you. And uh, uh, great. Uh, maybe uh, I think you, you explained quite a lot about these uh, challenges and why you, why you are doing them. Uh, do you think is there some uh, key point when trader should start thinking about going to challenges, or uh, you think once you have portfolio you can go anytime, or uh, is there some checklist you should like uh, meet when uh, you are thinking about it to not just lose yeah. money? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, definitely. So first of all, before thinking about doing these prop firm challenges, you should you should find something that could work out because <laughs> i think many people this is not not only for prop firms but in the trading industry in general like many people are just um trying to gamble their way through and this is not really yeah. working out in the long run and um yeah you you i mean i i think a lot of people they try these prop firm challenges and they think Okay, I just have to be lucky maybe and pass the, mm -hmm. uh, the the first phase and then the verification and then I have the account. But if you don't really have a long-term approach, it doesn't really help because you will lose the account quickly anyways because you still have these drawdown rules even if you get funded, so to say. So mm -hmm. the first thing you should do is to really find consistency in some way. Maybe... It can be a demo account. It doesn't really matter. But you can start with a demo account, for example, and trade this. And if you can trade this for one or two years and, and be profitable, then you can think about it. On, mm -hmm. and, and yeah, the first thing you should do is get some consistency in your trading. And the easiest way is to do it with uh, automated trading, I would say, because then you don't have to do all of this forward testing, but you can also do the back tests and then... If the back tests are already good, you can um, you should not completely rely on this, of course, but it always helps you to be faster in your strategy development, I would say. But it's not a good idea to just buy challenges and hope that you can pass them by luck, because this is something I, I would say which is or which will lose uh, lo lose you money in the long run. And um, yeah, so it's a bit. I mean, nobody wants to hear this, but um, but many people that are in this trading industry do not have a lot of money and they just try to get rich from trading. And this is, of course, this is the dream and this is the goal for so many people, but it's also something that is really unlikely to happen because it is just so hard and it will take so much time and there are these stories of people who just buy one challenge or, um, yeah, I don't know, pass this challenge and get a huge payout and everything. There are definitely people like this, but what, what they don't tell you is that often this is just luck. And it's, I mean, it's absolutely logical because you have, let's say, 10,000 people who buy a 200K challenge and all of them are gambling around. It's... Of course, one or two of them will will pass the challenges and they will also get a payout. And then this is, of course, the story that you will hear on YouTube. But, but most of these other people that buy the 200K challenge, they will not make it and they will fail and they will just burn money. So, yeah, this is why I, I would be a little bit careful with these uh, prop firms because chances that you lose are in my opinion for most people higher than chances that you will make it and the first thing that you do when you start with trading in my opinion should not be to buy challenges or challenge after challenge um, but the first thing you should do in my opinion is to start 
working on strategies and get a feeling for trading in general. And you can do this by learning how to, how to code or by just creating strategies with a strategy quant. But just have a look at different strategies, get a feeling for it, maybe start using it in a demo account, go through the first drawdown periods, go through the first good periods. So you really go through all of the different periods. And um, yeah, I, for me, at least, this is what I needed before I really had the um, confidence or before I really had the consistency that I needed um, to, to yeah, trade correctly. But yeah, so I would not recommend the absolute beginners to buy uh, a lot of challenges, I would say. <laughs> Yeah, understand. So basically for you, it's another way of money management and yeah. uh, another part uh, just in your training business. And yeah. if you have to do it with, with cold head, it's, it should not be start of your training career. It can be just the next step, which yeah. can uh, really, really help or, uh, yeah. or otherwise you will, there is no sh short Maybe time, so let me say one or two more words about this. It, it, mm -hmm. I mean, there, there are definitely people I mean, we have to, to um, make a difference here. As I said, there mm -hmm. are so many people in this trading sector who do not have a lot of money. And okay. uh, from my experience, there are even more people like this. They don't have a lot of money. They have this mm -hmm. big dream. And I totally understand this. Like eight years ago, when I started with trading, I was also dreaming about like, I mean, it's, it's perfect, right? You sit in front of the PC and you make money, right? So this is yeah. the dream everyone has when he trades. Otherwise, mm -hmm. there's no, not really a, a, a reason to go into this trading industry, right? But mm -hmm. most people do not have a lot of money. And if you then, let's say if your total savings are 5K and you buy a challenge that costs you 1K, I don't think it's a good idea because yeah. <laughs> it, the chances are really high that you lose this challenge. It will actually have an impact on your life if you spend a fifth of your total savings on this challenge and this is in my opinion not a good thing because it will have a huge mental impact on you it's the chances that it will uh, be um, uh, profitable in the long run are not super high if you are not really experienced with trading so this is when i would say Starting with a prop firm challenges, especially the expensive ones, is not a good idea. But of course, there are also other people. Let's say there is someone who has total savings of 50 or 100K. So he has a good amount of money in the bank. And mm -hmm. if this person then goes ahead and says, demo trading is too boring for me. I want to buy a 10K challenge. It costs me 100 euro. Then I would say, yeah. okay, I mean... Yeah. It doesn't really matter, right? It's, it's a, you can see it as a hobby and you, you pay money for other hobbies. If you say you have 50K in a bank and you want the thrill of trading this challenge because it's, of course, there are more emotions. It's more interesting than, than just yeah. trading on a demo account. I totally understand. And then I would say, okay, just go for it. It doesn't really matter. It will not have an impact on your actual life situation if you lose this money. And then it's, you can do whatever you want. It's, it's not... Not a problem, but the problem that I see is with all of the, the, the traders that do not have a lot of money and they just have this big dream. They see the marketing of the prop firms and they, say, they, they think I have a good chance of passing this. So I will just invest a fifth of my life savings into this. And this is where I see a problem. And this is what I would not recommend. Mm -hmm. And yeah, in this case, you are really just way better off if you um, instead do not invest any money and start looking at strategies and start looking at developing strategies, trying out different strategies. Yeah. And just mm -hmm. learn, learn without spending money. That's how I would start. Understand. Yeah. 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 It's uh, I think it's a very realistic, realistic view, yeah. which can save uh, if anyone is uh, considering and watching, uh, considering these challenges and watching this, uh, this podcast, then uh, I think it can give him uh, like some guidelines, how to think. And also there is like, for example, in our community, there is a like group of traders who, who have the strategic one and build up the portfolio. And we always recommend to small with the, so start with the, this uh, micro accounts or small accounts. Yeah. And they went through all of it, but basically they have families or I don't know, paying the, the houses. So they will never have capital like $100,000 or $50,000, which could, simply make positive impact on their life, even they have strategies. So 
The one way is to start doing the marketing on MQL market, for example. But there you know that the, 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 it's a lot of about marketing and a bit less about the quality. But now suppose there will be or there are some serious prop trading firms or brokers, then there is like new open gate for the, this kind of people because they simply didn't have possibility to have capital for trading. And now this possibility is there. So if you have good robots and you are experienced and you went the, all this way, as uh, Rene showed, then you can uh, and you can maybe start to go into bigger money this way. Yeah. Yeah. It's something which also makes sense for me, but uh, never it should never be starting point uh, yeah. like for the new yeah, trainers. That, that's what I wanted to say. Like I, yeah. I, I don't say never do it at all, but mm -hmm. it's not the best starting point. And yeah, understand. Yeah. And then also if you if you want to do it, you should not try to rush it. Do not try to gamble your way through because um as I said also with my accounts, it took me like I don't know, several months to pass the challenge. But I think mm -hmm. it's better to just take your time because it will give you a higher chance of of passing the challenge or to really uh, be profitable in the long run. Because just in the next 10 trades or in the next five weeks, I think you cannot really predict where your strategy or where your yeah. program yeah. is going because everyone who is experienced and who made these back tests knows that there are drawdown periods and for some some mm. strategies they might be longer for some they might not be as long but they are always there and there's always a chance that you start also before a drawdown period or in a drawdown mm. period mm. and if you then uh, buy a expensive challenge and you start in this drawdown period and your um and your risk settings are just too aggressive yeah you are pretty much just out before it starts. But if you just take a little bit a conservative approach and if you really take your time, you can maybe go through the whole drawdown period without hitting this 10% drawdown rule. Just because you just, you're just more calm, you do not try to force anything and you really do it the correct way. And I mean, trading is a long-term game. It's not... Yeah. I know the, the 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 marketing claims out there that try to sell something else. They try to sell you the dream of becoming rich overnight. But I mean, yeah. you can believe this, but at some point you will realize it's just not the reality. And <laughs> what what mm. what we can do is, I mean, I can only tell tell people that they should be a little bit more careful with believing everything. But if they don't. Believe me, I mean, everyone has to go their own way. And if they, <laughs> if they get hurt once, maybe next time they are more clever. But yeah, <laughs> I would always say yeah. it, it's better to be a little bit more careful than to risk uh, what you cannot afford to lose. We are able to control uh, our risk, not profit. Yeah, yeah, correct. You, you never know how much money you will make, but you can say... I will put my stop loss here. So this is the maximum amount of money I will lose if you don't get slippage. But <laughs> yeah, you have, a, you have a good chance to, to risking your losses. And yeah, also, yeah, I, I can only say this again. For me, backtesting is a huge point because this will really show you for your specific strategy how long the average drawdown period can be. And this will really help you to understand what you can expect and what you should not expect. And yeah. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Rene. I think uh, there was a lot of insights and uh, we we did a very good summary of our of our uh, the interview. And so this brings us to the end of this uh, interview and a huge thanks for sharing your valuable knowledge and experience. It was real. It was uh, exactly as you are doing it. So thank you for being open. And um, yeah, as you told, uh, if someone want to have insights and someone is thinking here, he have good resources. If uh, someone want to go his way and let's do it and try it. So, and for our viewers, if you enjoyed the interview, don't forget to like, comment, uh, write us what you think about challenges and these topics. And uh, do not forget to subscribe the channel for more expert insights and views. Also, 
make sure to follow Rene socials and uh, you have a very active YouTube channel to stay updated with his latest strategies, tips, and uh, also he told his big story, uh, what he's playing now with this uh, FTMO and other prop firms. So you, you, you can see how it follows as he is regularly um, recording videos and openly openly discuss what he is living in this trading area. So thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next episode. Bye. Yeah, thanks for having me. Bye. Bye. -bye. <laughs> Bye.